Welcome back to the solar install. This last week I did a lot of thinking about how I want to uh, do the setup in the power shed here. So I'm going to go ahead, rearrange a few things, and get busy with the install. First step is I'm going to move the generator to the other side of the cabin just so it's not so noisy. So my plan now is to pull all these batteries out and put down some foam board because this structure is just sitting on pallets with a sheet of plywood uh, screwed on top of the pallets. I think you can see that. This is unheated obviously so I want to try to keep the batteries a little bit warmer so I'm going to cut some uh, foam board put down underneath the batteries probably a little sheet of plywood also for the batteries to sit on and then I'm going to build a cut some more foam board for the four walls around, right around the batteries and then a foam board top also set on top of the batteries hopefully that keeps them a little bit warmer during the winter time and they don't discharge or anything like that so let's go ahead get started and get these batteries uh, moved out Batteries are removed, now to measure and cut some foam board. Okay, to get you all caught up, this is what I have done so far. I've removed all the batteries, and then I put in inch and a half uh, blue board down on the floor. Then I put a thin piece of plywood, 3 8 plywood down, put all the batteries back in, hooked them all up in a parallel. So battery one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the loop just goes right around. I put inch and a half uh, foam board on the three sides. I'm gonna have one piece right here also, and then a piece on the top. And that'll be for the winter time to help uh, keep a little heat in the batteries and keep some of the cold out. I went ahead and put this piece of plywood up. It's three quarter inch finished plywood that I had left over from putting the floor in the loft. So I'm going to just go ahead and mount all the various components of the solar system onto this piece of plywood instead of having it on the three different walls. I'm just going to put everything on here. There's not that many components involved, so I'll just mount everything to this piece of plywood. Now I need to figure out where all the various components are going to go on this uh, piece of plywood and get them installed. So let's go ahead and look into doing that. Okay, this is what I have done so far today. As you can see, I made some progress. Let me uh, take you through what I have done. I have the breaker panel permanently mounted. I have the combiner box temporarily mounted. I need to get bigger screws, four of them, then I'll mount that permanently. I have the charge controller where it's going to go. It's not permanently mounted yet because I need that drill bit extension for my drill. So once I get that, then I can permanently mount this. I don't have the two on-off switches mounted yet. I do have all the bus bars mounted. As you can see, all four bus bars. These are the ends to the batteries, the power going into the battery, and these two are the power coming out of the battery. And as you can see, I have all the batteries all hooked up. I do need to cut a little bit more foam, but I can do that anytime. And then on this side, I have the Gendel Pure Sign Inverter partially mounted. I need the drill bit extension before I can finish mounting it. So, but it'll be uh, the 
positive and negative will be coming going from these two bus bars up to here and then on this side I'll have a an actual plug that will plug in here and then I'll run the line up and hook into my breaker panel and I'll, I'll do it that way and that actually works out good because in the summertime, if it, if the cabin gets way too hot, I do have an air conditioner, but I don't want to run the air conditioner from the batteries. I much rather run it from my big generator I have sitting there. So this way I can unplug the inverter and then just plug my uh, big generator into it that way. So I'm happy with that. Oh yeah, right here, I'm gonna mount the IOTA power converter the inputs for this will be from the generator to charge the batteries if I'm not getting enough solar or wind. So that's going to go right there and the cords will run down to the on and off switch right here. There, then go into the bus bars. So that's what I have. I think I'm going to stop for the day and clean up my mess. It's dinner time. I'm getting hungry. I don't know how much more I'll get done with this tomorrow since I need that uh, drill bit extension, but we'll see what, how it goes. I just want to say I really appreciate all my new subscribers. Thank you. I've been averaging one or two a day for the last about month or so, so I'm happy with that. I've gone over 200 subscribers now, so I'm happy. Thank you all very much. This is where I left off yesterday. I don't have everything mounted securely because I needed the extension for the cordless drill and I don't I didn't mount the power inverter up here yet because I was going to mount it down here but I decided to move it up here and I need the extensions for that too the extension for the cordless drill and I need the extension for this this isn't mounted yet either so luckily I was able to borrow one from a friend that I saw last night so I'm gonna go ahead get these mounted I think what I'm gonna do is take the pure sign uh, controller and flip it upside down so this end is over here and the reason I'm gonna do that is as you can see this end has the battery terminals and this end has all the power control and everything and instead of uh, leaning over the batteries and stuff like that to see everything it'll be right over here on this end and easy to see easy to get to so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and securely mount all this other stuff before I do the next step so let's get busy here's the drill extension I needed that I got from a friend last night Yep, that, that should definitely work. Let's see how level it is. Uh, it's just a hair out of level. That's level right there. And you can see it's just, it's about an eighth of an inch out of level. There, that's pretty steep level. I need a different extension because it won't go into the hole any further. A hair loose though, but it'll it'll work for the time being. 
And then the last thing to mount. Uh, whoa. Is a iota power converter, which goes between the generator and the system here. And I'm gonna mount it right, right in this area. There's two screws, let's put the other two in. Okay, I think the next step is to install the grounding rod outside. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're around the back corner of the power shed. All the batteries are right down here and the inverter and stuff is on the offset wall from right here. So it's on the front side. And what I'm using as a grounding rod is just a piece of half inch rebar. I got it for free, so I'm happy about that. And I'm just going to pound it in uh, right about here. And actually, you can see how uh, easy it went that, uh, I don't know, foot 15 inches. And now it's down to the compacted gravel. So let's go ahead and finish pounding this in. Ow! Mmm. There it goes. Yeah, I think I hit a rock or something. Ah, she's gone. This ground, once you get down about, uh, probably average two feet down, it turns to compacted fine gravel. And as you go down through that, it just gets tighter and tighter. The friction factor goes up. I think that's good enough. Most I've seen is usually sticking out of the ground about that far, so another couple inches down is probably the average, but oh well. It's good enough we're out here at the cabin. Okay, I got the grounding rod installed, but I don't have a strand of copper wire for it right now, so this week, I'm going to go ahead and buy a strand and bring it out and I'll hook that up next week. But let's go ahead and get everything hooked up and see if the cabin will run off the batteries. So uh, this next part should be interesting. Uh, as I connect the, the inverter to the batteries, there's supposed to be a big spark that happens. So let's uh, be cautious and go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens. Okay, it says to connect this first. Leave that hang there. Now let's stick the negative on as it says to do. Okay, that's on good and tight. Connect the red first, but somewhere in here there's going to be some sparking. So I got to start being uh, cautious and not be grounded to anything. Okay, the instructions say connect the red first to the red terminal of the battery. So let's go ahead and do that and see if there's any sparks. This is the part that of electricity that it starts I start getting nervous about. Okay, nothing there. Now I had uh wanted to put a on off switch in here but I think I'm gonna hold off for the time being uh, 
Okay, that's on good and tight. Let's put the cover on. Okay, this must be where the spark happens. So let's see what happens. No spark. I wonder what's going on. It said it was going to spark, but it didn't. In another YouTube video I watched when the guy hooked up the inverter, it sparked real bad, so I don't know what's going on. Let's hope I got everything hooked up correctly. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. Let's hope uh, nothing blows up. Output zero, input 12.1 volts, output zero. Let's go ahead and hook the cabin into the system here and see how it performs. Okay, I have the extension cord plugged into the inverter running over to the cabin. I have the cabin plugged into the other end of this extension cord. I don't know if you can hear this, but there's no generator running right now, so nothing's on in the cabin. Let's go ahead, power this inverter on, and see what happens. The batteries are holding at 12 volts, and the output is 30 watts. Go in the cabin and see if anything works in the cabin. Okay, with the TV on, the refrigerator on, couple batteries charging, let's go out and see what the inverter says. Batteries are at 11.7 volts and it's pulling 130 watts. The next step is I need to get the batteries made for the power converter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll check back in with you before I hook them in. I have my two power cables uh, built. I got the ends crimped on. It's not the best job in the world, but I think it'll work and these are 3 8 inch hole connectors for 8 gauge wire and then I got the two other ends cut because they just insert into the power converter and it's a screw tightened onto them so let's go ahead get these installed and go move on to the next step. Okay that's all hooked up. Now the next step is to bring the generator back in and run a cord over so I can connect it into the power here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a little noisy right now, but the generator is plugged into the system. It's charging the batteries. The inverter is now showing 12.6 volts going through it. So everything's working the way it should. And I'm so happy I can turn off the generator at night and hopefully make it clear through the night without any uh, uh, generator running. Although the downside is the generator is not running on efficiency mode, so it's basically running at full blast at the moment. But hopefully uh, once I get the solar panels hooked up, uh, I won't even hardly have to turn on the generator during the summertime anyways. We'll have to recheck it in the wintertime and see how it's holding up. It's the next morning now and the cabin's been on battery power all night. It's been uh, at least nine hours that it's been running on battery power. So let's see what the inverter has to show. The input uh, volt is 11.8 still. So it barely used any juice overnight. 
and I had the refrigerator running obviously and then I had my cell phone plugged in that was all that was on all night but so it's gonna run for a long time just on batteries in the next episode of the solar install I'm gonna start installing the solar panels so make sure you subscribe to the channel so uh, you don't miss the uh, progress of the solar install thank you